For our model today, we're going to do a brush back hairstyle. Um, he has a very strong center part, and when I spin him around, I'm going to show you uh, he has quite a few calyx in the back and different growth patterns. Uh, one of the challenges with this particular um, haircut is underneath here, you can see the hair wants to stick straight out. So what we have to do to get a what I like to call a visual blend, but not a technical blend, what we're going to have to do is comb the hair out of the way in front, and we're going to slightly undercut just the front to the back of the ear, mid to back of the ear. And then as we spin them around, then we're going to blend it. Everything will be blended. And then as I talked about before, you can see he has a lot of uh, calyx and different growth patterns back here. So as I, move, as I move the hair around, you can see where it wants to jump up. So what we're going to do there is we're going to leave it long enough so it'll sit down. We may do some razor sculpting or some type of texturizing there. We'll see when we get there. And as we spin them around to the other side here, uh, you can see it again. This hair on the side wants to stick straight out. So what we have to do is we have to comb the top completely out of the way. And we're going to undercut this underneath so it'll just kind of lay flat. And then the top will brush back over it. And we're going to give a nice taper around the edges and a nice taper in the back. So to begin, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the top. So what I want to do is I want to wet the top down. We've already freshly shampooed our, our client. And I want to go through and cut the top length first. So I like to use a six inch, six inch uh, scissor to cut the top. So what we're going to have to do since the hair is growing from front to back, we're going to come from the back and cut it forward. So the angle that I want on the hair is I want to have this angle. So it's longer in the back and it's longer in the front. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to over direct the back forward to the back of the ear here. So we leave it long enough so it lays down so we have enough weight to lay down. And same thing in the front. When I get to the front, Instead of coming all the way forward like this, we're going to over direct the front back to the front of the ear and that's going to leave the hair long enough in the front. And that's going to give us this angle where the hair will be longer in the front, shorter in the middle, and longer in the back. So these, uh, these small details are very important, especially when you're dealing with a lot of different growth patterns on top. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come a comb across the back. We'll give you a good angle here, what exactly what we're doing. We're combing straight across the back, and we're going to split it where the crown is. Okay, and you can see where all this hair wants to stick up and stick out. We're not going to cut that. And we're going to comb the hair forward. Okay, and that's going to be to the back of the ear. We're combing it forward to the back of the ear, and we're going to get a center guide. And it's been about two months since uh, this gentleman's last haircut, so we're going to take about two inches off. I'm using a traveling guide so I can see my previous guide in the comb. It's right underneath there. So I want to make sure that I grab the hair from behind. And it's two moves. The comb goes in at a 45 degree angle. I rotate the comb and I lift up. And once I get to the front of the ear, so I'm at the front of the ear now, now my traveling guide becomes stationary and I pull all the hair from the front to that guide. And it's paper thin and we can see the previous guide and then we're going to cut across. And then that's our center section on top. So now we're going to do the same thing on the right side and the left side. I'm going to comb the hair to the back of the ear. I want to make sure that I rotate my fingers. I'm using my comb to apply pressure to the top of the head, so I have tension on the hair. I'm rotating the hair to parallel to the floor, rotating my fingers parallel to the floor. So that way we get a nice square cut. I'm keeping an eye on the ear and my center guide. And now we're at the front of the ear, so the traveling guide becomes stationary. OK. 
And then what I'm going to do is take one more section to see if there's any hair there. Sometimes in this last section, depending on how long the person has had, it's been since they've had their hair cut, there may be some hair to cut, there may not be. So we're going to rotate that parallel to the floor. There's a little bit there, not much. Okay, so there's the center guide right there. It's just a little bit to cut. We don't want to round our fingers, especially with uh, this gentleman's hair. It's so straight, it's going to st it'll stick right out if we, um, if we cut it too short. Okay, and you can see we combed that back. It's laying down nicely, and it's still laying down nicely on the side here. We want that to lay down nicely, and then when we taper up underneath and, and comb it all back with a pomade or a gel, it's going to stay back nice. So now we're going to come to the other side and we're going to do the same thing. Comb straight across and sp split the hair. Comb it forward to the back of the ear. Locate our center guide. Make sure we're at the back of the ear. Using a traveling guide, work our way forward. I don't like to cut past my center knuckle. Once you do, you're um, taking a chance on cutting yourself. So we're going to take one more section here. We're at the front of the ear. The traveling guide becomes stationary. We pull the hair from the front back. And after each panel I take, I always comb the hair back or in the, whatever direction the client's going to style their hair because I want to make sure that it's doing what I want it to do. I like to say I like to keep the hair neat when I'm cutting it. I don't like it all over the place. I like to be able to tell that it's... Uh, it's going to be right into the, the, the hair is going to fall right into the style that we're cutting it. Okay, this is that last section. There's not really much or if anything to cut there. But I always like to check. Okay. So now what we're going to do is once we have that top section cut, we're going to cut the section that I like to call the round of the head. So we're going to come around and we're going to start in the back here. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to angle my fingers down. And that's going to allow for the hair to be long enough in the crown so it lays down. Because with all those different growth patterns, it's really going to stick up if we cut it too short in the crowns. That's one of the most common problems I see with these brush back hairstyles, is that the hair is cut too short in the crown area and it's sticking up. You shouldn't have to use uh, half a bottle of gel or half a jar of pomade for, to, for it to lay down. Okay, so same thing on the side here. Once I get to the front of the ear, because I want this hair to be hanging over a little bit, the traveling guide becomes stationary and we pull the hair back. Okay, now we're starting to get a blend and we haven't done any texturizing yet. So you can see here again when I move that hair around, he's got a, a part there that, don't, that goes all the way down to here. So if we're not really careful, that's going to that's gonna jump right up on us. So what I'll do is I don't even want to cut over it and take a chance. I'm going to over direct away from it. In other words, over direct means just pulling farther away and not cutting right on top of it. My fingers are parallel to the side of his head. I'm using that same traveling guide. Now I'm in front of the ear, so that traveling guide becomes stationary, and I pull all that hair forward. Okay, now we can see it all, all taking shape. So it's these hair, this hair underneath that we have to be careful of that we're really going to taper that in so it doesn't stick out. So before we start that, what I want to do is I want to brush my client's face off. Always want to make sure your client is comfortable when you're cutting their hair. Okay, so the next step then, we're going to dampen the hair down on top and just comb it out of the way.
So you can see right here where this hair in front is going to be undercut. And as soon as we get to the, to the middle of the ear, we're going to start to blend it into the back. And we're going to do this all clipper over comb. So what I want to use is I want to use a white clipper comb. So I'm using a white clipper comb so there's contrast. I, I can see the hair and I'm going to use a detachable blade clipper. Uh, the reason why I like the detachable blade clipper so much is because it's a rotary motor clipper and it has a lot of power and to go through the hair. So I'm going to take uh, my one and a half blade which cuts and blends at the same time. I want to make sure to turn my clipper on first before I snap the blade shut. So now we're going to use our clipper over comb technique and we're just going to work our way up the side. I'm just laying that comb, I'm laying the clipper flat on the comb. Now as I come towards the ear area, I'm angling the comb out in the back here, angling the comb out this way. So now I'm starting to go from the undercut to the blended area. And as I do that and work my way up the side of the head, I'm pulling the heel of the blade away from the comb. I'm pulling the heel of the blade away from the comb. So what that does is when I'm using just the teeth, I'm just blending. So when I'm flat, I'm cutting. When I'm at a 45 degree angle, I'm cutting and blending. And when I'm tilted all the way up, I'm just blending. And we're going to take the clipper at a 45 degree angle and start to taper around the outline of the haircut. and also through the temple area. Okay, now we're gonna bend the head forward just a little bit and we're gonna work on the back. We're gonna do the same thing. And the reason why I like to use my clipper over comb technique is because I can take the place of three or four clipper attachments or clipper blades and I don't have to snap them on and off. I can control, I can control all the lengths with the clipper and the comb. It's more accurate. I'm not creating any weight lines. And that's how you increase, uh, I don't like to use the word speed, but that's how you increase your efficiency. So you're actually done faster, but you're done faster because you're doing everything once. So at the bottom, I rest the comb right on his neck, and then I start to pull away as I work my way up. So what that's doing is creating a natural graduation and a natural taper at the neckline. And then for this heavy area, we'll worry about that. We'll worry about that at the end, texturizing that. But as you can see, We've never created any weight line around the transition area, so we don't have to spend a lot of time blending that out. And the other thing I'm going to do while I have my one and a half blade on here, since it's a, a slightly larger blade, it's an eighth of an inch, I'm also going to start the tapered neckline or the faded neckline. And you can see he's got a real nice hairline, so you can see right where it should be. So we're just gonna we're gonna scoop that out with our larger blade, and then come back with our smaller blades, and we're gonna have a nice faded faded neckline. It's gonna really make this hairstyle stand out. So then we're just going to rotate the chair and I'm following the contour of the head shape with the clipper and comb. 
So your standard attachments are normally a sixteenth, one eighth, quarter, three eighths, and a half inch. So when I start out with the comb flat on his neckline, the comb is a sixteenth of an inch. So basically I'm starting out here, sixteenth, eighth, quarter, three eighths, and a half. So I'm taking the place of five attachments of five different lengths with just with just my comb. So it's much more efficient and saves you time. So we're going to blend this till we get to the back of the ear and then we're going to start the undercut in the front. So after I finish this last panel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush my clipper off, dampen the hair, and do the other cut, undercut in the front, front here. So what I want to do is I want to take my clipper brush, brush that off good. So we'll set our clipper down and grab our water bottle. And slightly dampen it. We're going to comb the top out of the way just like we did on the other side. Start our taper around the outline of the haircut. And then where this hair has a tendency to stand out, straight out, we're just going to taper it right in. This way he's going to get a good four to six weeks out of his haircut. So now what I want to do, after I'm done with this, again, I want to brush the clipper off. So when I pick it up again, there's no hair on there. And we're going to come back with our adjustable clipper and finish our tapered outline. So for the tapering portion of the haircut, we're going to use a light colored, smaller comb so we can see the contrast in the hair. Our adjustable clipper it has a lever on it which adjusts from very close to a little bit longer and, and the blade is shaped like a scoop. So what that's going to allow us to do is give a nice tapered outline. But the one thing you always have to look for and be careful of is you want to check to see if there's a high hairline around the ears because that's the other thing is even though we want it tapered we don't want to have this big arcing white wall around the ears so I just want to very lightly go in with the corner of the blade and just lighten it up and maybe just a little bit of clipper over comb. Then I'm going to close the blade down all the way, pull the ear down and just get a few of those long hairs right there And then when I come back with the out with the T outliner, we're just going to get a little bit of the uh, hair around the ears. That's it. We don't want to do too much here because he has a somewhat about, I would say not a high hairline, but medium. And if we do too much, there's going to be a big space between his ear and where his hairline starts. And we don't want that. So we're going to pull the ear down. Again, he has a nice hairline so we can see right where it should be. So we're just going to lighten that hairline up just a little bit. And then when we come back with our, our trimmer, you can see right where that should be, right on the natural hairline. So now on the bottom of the neck, we're just going to make sure we keep this blade parallel to the floor so we don't round the corners. 
We want a nice diagonal line on the side. If we want around the corners, we're not going to get that. Okay, now I'm going to close it halfway and not go as high. So I'm just kind of going up and stopping and just a little bit of a flicking motion. Now I'm going to close it all the way. Okay, and then our taper is there, and then we can come back with our, our outline, and we're just going to clean up the hair on his neck. So we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. A little clipper over comb if we have to, if the hair is still thick there. And then same thing in front and above the ear, a little clipper over comb. Pull the ear down. Behind the ear, a little clipper over comb. Okay, so that's a simple step because we've done so much with our clipper over comb first with our big blade and our big uh, comb that it makes that step a lot easier. So very little we have to do uh, with our adjustable clipper. So we're going to brush. We're going to brush that off. And then we're going to grab our outliner. Going to pull that ear down. And we're just going to clean up that hair a little bit. Again, I don't want to take that high around the ear. Just any, any long hairs that are hanging down. So that's tapered and off the ear, but we don't have a big space. And if you look really closely, it's thick in front of the ear and it's a little thinner behind the ear. So I left the hair a little fuller right here behind the ear. So it, it matches with everything else. So we had thick here, it's thick here, it's a little thinner there, so we want to make sure it all matches. So now we're going to give a nice diagonal line right here. And the key here is you don't want to push the clipper in too far and go off the natural hairline. You want to stay right on the natural hairline and we don't want to cut off the taper. We want to leave a little bit of that natural uh, bevel or taper that we've we created there. So now we have a nice di sharp diagonal line. And then we're just going to shave in an upward motion. We don't want to drag down because that irritates the skin. The cutting blade is too close to the stationary blade, non-cutting blade, and that's going to create irritation. Then we're going to pull, pull this down here on the back, pull the hair cloth down, and we're going to shave upward and stay just below the hair cloth. And I'm stretching the skin as I do it. When I stretch the skin, it pops the hair out so we can get a nice closer cut. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. You can see right where the outline should be. So we're going to very gently touch the skin. We don't want to press because it's a very sharp clipper. And then we turn it around and we shave to it. That gets it nice and close. And we have a nice sharp outline on the other side which makes the taper and the shape of the haircut stand out. So same thing here. It's thick in the back. It's thick in front. It's a little thinner just above the ear. But we still want to clean up those few longer hairs just above the ear and just in front. And blend that into the beard. Okay, now that that's complete, we're just going to brush off his neck and then we're going to texturize the top a little bit. We're going to use a razor sculpting technique. I'm going to use the same comb and I'm going, to use, I'm going to use a straight razor for cutting hair. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to use the razor sculpting technique and we're going to sculpt it backwards the way, he, the way he combs his hair. And what that's going to do is it's going to thin it out. And because his hair is so straight, it's going to help his hair stay, uh, stay back in the same position. So other, whereas thinning shears, it would thin out both sides of the hair 
and it would make it uh, real stringy and point out. So I want to start away from the hairline in front. I grip the hair with the comb. I hold the razor at a 45 degree angle and I just work my way back. And I'm going to do this to the side a little bit and tilt his head so you can see what I'm doing, so you can see it better. And then you get an idea on how much hair is coming off there. Now this hair here in the corner, I want to comb it all the way to the center. And again, I want to stay away from the roots or the base of the hair. Because that's going to give us small little hairs that are going to stick out, which we don't want. So I'm locking the hair in with the comb. Razor's at a 45 degree angle. Okay, and what that does, it smooths it out. It smooths out the wave a little bit. And now we'll do the other side. And you can see there the amount of hair that's coming off. So I'm doing this all to the center. And again, I'm pulling the hair towards the center, away from the base of the hair or the roots of the hair because I don't want little hair sticking out. Okay, so now that hair's laying down nice on top. We've smoothed out that wave in front. Now the final step is going to be in the back here where it's really thick in the back. We're going to do the same thing in the back except we want to stay away from the base of the hair where it wants to stick up and we want to work in this area here. So we're going to do two things. We're going to do razor sculpting first and then we're going to use a razor over comb technique second. So we always have tension on the hair, whether we're picking it up with our fingers or with the comb. So now we did it in the one direction. Now we're going to come in the other direction. So I'm locking it in with the comb. Okay, so that takes care of that portion. So now, just for right in this area here, we're going to use a bigger comb and we're going to use a razor over comb technique for the final blend. So this is going to take quite a bit of weight out and I'm staying well below, well below the uh, crown or the calic area and we're using this angle, a 45 degree angle, so that hair never comes into the into the comb because we don't want to cut that hair. Okay, so now we got a nice blend towards the back. You see how that's blending in nice. I'm going to just finish up, touch up this side. So it's not just about cutting the hair shorter. There's a lot of different techniques that we need depending on the type of hair your client has. So you have to be well versed in all the different techniques. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our vent brush. We're going to brush it all straight back. And you can tell even without any product in his hair, now we have a nice blend. Blends right in, right from the taper, right through the top. So that completes our haircut. We're going to move on to the beard and after we finish the beard we're going to go ahead and, and uh, show you how to style the hair properly. For an optimal style what we would like to do is we're going to start out with our gel which is a combination of a little bit of pomade and gel. It's 100% alcohol free and it doesn't have any flakes. So what we want to do is we want to put the gel in the hair first and blow dry it straight back with the gel. That's going to form the shape. And then we're going to take a high shine, uh, stronghold pomade 
to give it the final style. And then we're going to brush that all through the all through the hair with the pomade after we completely dry it with the uh, with the gel. When you're putting the pomade in, you want to make sure that the hair is completely dry to get the full benefit of the of the pomade. All of the Zorian of New York products are 100% water soluble, so they rinse out really easily. The only thing is, if you're putting it into slightly damp hair or wet hair, it's going to dilute the hold a little bit, and you're going to use more product. So, for the best results, we want to make sure the hair is dry. So, to start out, we're going to take a good amount of gel. We want to work it into our hands uh, really good all the way through, and start out with our fingertips. And then we want to work it right down to the roots of the hair. And then I'm just going to wipe our hands off real quick and grab the hair dryer and a vent brush and dry it all straight back. And when we dry it straight back, the other thing we want to do is we want to lift the hair. And you can see was when I'm putting the product in, I'm pushing it in from the temple area up towards the crown. So that way during the day, if the hair falls a little, it falls right in, it will fall right into place. But you can see on the sides, that's how we want to get it. So we have a, you see it taking shape already. We have that visual blend. It's not a technical blend because we have the undercut in front, but visually it looks uh, perfectly blended. So now what we want to do is just quickly brush my hands off real quick and then grab a vent brush and a hair dryer. So I just brushed off my hands. We grabbed a uh, powerful uh, hair dryer with a nozzle on it. And the thing I like about the nozzle is it really directs the heat. So we're going to turn it on. I want to use a high heat. I want to completely dry the hair. So you see me rolling the brush and what that does is it gets the heat right down to the base of the hair and, and that, what that does is it builds that strength at the bottom so it's going to lift the hair up and give the hair um, a, a good strong base. So now that we have the hair completely dry, I'm going to run the brush through it one more time. And then we're going to take our Zorian of New York pomade. And we're going to take a good amount of it. We're going to emulsify it into our hands so it's completely spread out and transparent. And the same thing that we did with the gel. We're going to start with the fingertips and then use the palms of your hands to get it right down, right on the sides, push it right down on the sides. Not so much too flat on top, but we do want to get it right down to the base of the hair. And then uh, 
a trick on top to keep the, uh, the little bit more height on top is I then take a, a pick on the top to lift the hair up. And I, I still have the product on my hand, so as I'm doing that, I'm pushing the product on the top of the hair. And we're just going to push it down forward a little bit. And then I'll take the vent brush again and comb it straight back on the sides and to the back. Like that. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So then we have the height on top. It slicks straight back and uh, we're, we're nice and blended on the sides. We'll spin you around to show you what the final look should be like. So again, even though we're not completely blended in the front because we did a slight undercut with these longer tops and these slick back haircuts, you want to leave it definitely longer on top and tapered closer in the side. That way you have a, a, leaner, a leaner look with the, higher, with the higher top. So for just one quick review, what we used is the Zorian of New York Firm Hold Styling Gel, which we completely um, emulsified in our hands and put through the hair. We dried it till it was completely dry, and then we used our High Shine Stronghold Pomade to finish the look. We styled it with a uh, pick and a vent brush.